Hello and welcome back to 5 Minute Meta Sounds, the show where we, I don't know, talk about meta sounds in Unreal. Today we're going to be talking about all the ways that we can randomize and variationate our sounds. So, jumping straight into it, we're in the meta sound graph thingo. If you don't know how to get here, you'll need to go sounds, meta sound source, you've got a new meta sound, well done. So, there are kind of three main dimensions that we can randomize our sound in. Those being pitch, pitch up and down, time across this way, and the actual sample itself. So, the, the breadth. So, the first one is pitch. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to start, as we do with most um, meta sounds, with a wave player so we have a wave player on play play sound let's go like i don't know chain mail one on finished finish it mono to mono so now if we hit play we are playing that same sound over and over again so let's variationate this sound the first thing we're going to do is the pitch so on play we're going to grab a random float value between negative five and positive five. This is a pretty big number. Uh, this is in semitones. We're going to plug this into the pitch shift, and this is going to select a new number every time this is executed. So now if we have a look, There you go. Pretty simple. So that's our kind of up and down variation. Um, the next one we're going to look at is selecting a random sample from a list. There's a few ways we could do this. Uh, one of them is by making an array variable. So this could be called our sounds. The type is going to be wave asset. And we're going to click the is array button. So now if we were to drag this in, this is an input of an array. So when we actually play this sound, we would need to set this object explicitly. Otherwise, instead of using an input, we could make a variable called wave array of type wave asset is array. And this can be used as like a kind of like a static or like a preset. So let's just use this for the time being. Now you might be able to see, yeah, you can see over my head, we have this uh, default values section. What we can do, which is very handy, uh, what we can do is we can select multiple files and we can just drag them straight into there and that will add them all into the array. So you can see here, we've got nine of them. Now, what we will do is random get, which is just gonna select a random one of these values and output it here. Then we're gonna put this into the wave asset slot and we can just put these one after the other. So this is just going to be saying on play, select a random number for the pitch variation. Then out of here into the random get, get a random sample from this array that we've set up. Do we want any repeats? No. One is no. Zero is we do want to allow repeats. This, this basically just it's like shuffle. So we have nine samples in this array and it won't repeat any of them until all of them have been repeated. So imagine we've got nine cards and we shuffle them and then we deal them out one by one. And then when we're done, we combine them all again, shuffle them and then deal them out, you know, in a different order. But we never get two of the same card until they're all dealt. So that's basically what this no repeats thing is saying. So anyway, following the execution chain on next wave player, this wave asset is the chosen asset with the chosen pitch. On finished, we finish. So now if we hit play. We're getting random sample and we are getting random pitch. So the next thing we can do is randomize the kind of timing of how this is being played. This might seem a little bit roundabout, but it's so we prevent looping code. We are going to do a, a trigger repeat with a period of the maximum kind of time frame that we want, you know, these sounds to kind of be randomized in. So let's go like 
five seconds. Then whenever one of these repeats is triggered, so every five seconds, we are going to get a random time between zero and let's just say 4.5 because our, our sample goes for half a second or something. And we don't want to kind of play samples over the top of one another. And then on next, we're going to delay by this value that we've chosen. And then this will be going into our random pitch, our random sample, play it randomly. We're not going to finish it on finish because that would kill the sound too early. This will give a warning, but you can just delete it if you don't want to, or sorry, remove the interface if you wanted to like destroy it manually. So if we hit play, this will kind of just do its own thing and just play the sounds in a pretty random fashion. You know what? I'm going to speed it up a little just because it's very slow. So let's just do like a, a 2.5 second with a zero to two second delay. So let's hit play. There we go. So you can see, you can actually see the execution pins uh, happening visually. So you can see this trigger repeat is every 2.5 seconds spitting out an input into the random time, which then spits it straight into the trigger delay. But then you can see that this delay is delaying it by a random amount. So I hope that kind of makes sense. Now, this isn't a true kind of looping randomizer. So this is kind of just saying we have uh, like a timeline. This is time and we've segmented it into, you know, two second intervals. And each of these intervals will contain one play of the sound, but the actual position within it will be completely random. So we might get some that are close together. We might get some that are far apart uh, like this. Essentially, it's just kind of randomizing the timing of the sound. This might be useful for things like ambient sounds. Maybe it's like birds chirping. Maybe you've got like, you know, you've set up some kind of piano stuff like in Breath of the Wild, where it will just play a random little piano fiddly diddly at, you know, random intervals. And the benefit of doing this all inside the meta sound is that this doesn't run on the game thread. This runs on its own thread, completely separate from all of the, the gameplay timers and delays and ticks and blah, 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 blah. So that was just a short little example of how we can kind of get some random variation through meta sounds. I hope you learned a little bit more about the interface, but we will be exploring more and more complex things as this series goes on. So I hope you are looking forward to it. And as always, if you want to support this channel monetarily, you can do so for as little as $1 per month through Patreon, which is linked in the description. And if you have any questions about the tutorials or just game dev in general, you can join our Discord server, which is also in the description. A big shout out to the Twitch, Twitch people that are actually watching me record these videos. Uh, if you do want to join us, it's twitch.tv slash prismaticadev. And with that being said, we say goodbye. Goodbye.